The Sun Devils bully the Buffaloes, coming away with a 35-13 win over that school from Colorado to open up Pac-12 conference play. Hi, everyone. For DevilsDigest.com, I'm Zach Keenan. Joining us for our postgame recap is our publisher, Hode Rubino, and we're all set to take a look at this one. Hode, 35 points. We'll start right there with that offense. It's a good number you're putting up. Yeah, absolutely. ASU overall put, put up 439 yards of total offense, 267 uh, uh, in the air, um, over over 160 on on the ground, um, maybe somewhat of an imbalanced effort in terms of uh, the passing game really clicking much more in the first half than the second half. Flip the script, <laughs> kind of like last week. You have the rush rushing game that, that was really much more important in, in in the second half. But overall, I mean, look, you you were you were playing uh, one of the worst defenses uh, in in the Pac-12. Uh, as we said, uh, this is a Buffalo team that came in to here after a 30 to nothing uh, a shutout. But the thing is, we knew that uh, this defense uh, was pretty stingy, uh, especially in the secondary. So I think uh, it's definitely no small feat uh, for ASU to have one of its better passing games, uh, not only this year, but even even go back to last year against against a team against a team like Colorado. Uh, maybe you'd like to see uh, more. Uh, uh, r rushing yards than you saw this week because uh, Minnesota last week in a 30 to nothing win uh, did have over 270 yards uh, on the ground. But I think with ASU, just because the passing game was playing at, 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 a, at a pretty good level for, for long stretches, uh, they could quote unquote afford uh, maybe not to rush the ball that great, especially in the first half. Uh, Zach Hill, defensive coordinator, said, said after the game that he feels that Jenny Daniels, when it comes to the passing game, is more and more comfortable. Sure. There were there were some plays that that, that that were left out, but I think if you're looking at from game one to game four today in the 2021 season, you're seeing the passing game maybe taking baby steps, but but, but really baby steps in the right direction. Again, you'd probably like to see this offense maybe explode a little more. It scored seven points in the first, second, and third quarter. Only in the fourth quarter they actually, they actually scored 14. But uh, but I think that this offense uh, sl slowly but surely uh, is re really really getting its footing, especially in, in the passing game and in the rushing game. I think they're still doing pretty well. Uh, another game without uh, the Diamante Trainum, but uh, Dan Ongada is proving time and time again that he is definitely up to the task when it, when when, it, when he's called upon. I thought I thought really a great game by him, and really the offensive line uh, did not yield even one sack. That allowed allowed uh, Jaden Daniels, if I'm not mistaken, seven carries for 75 yards. So Jaden Daniels uh, wasn't really forced to rush the ball uh, that much, but I think when he did, he, he did so very well. So overall, uh, a, a pretty good night for the offense. Maybe not something that would really uh, be exploding with joy or confidence, but again, especially when you compare to last week, but even to the first two weeks when you played uh, the, the quote-unquote cupcakes in the schedule, I think you have to be pretty pretty happy with, with the way this offense is going again. Baby steps, but baby steps in the right direction. Hold, I guess this win that we're experiencing didn't affect the pass game too much. Jaden Daniels, 236 yards passing and two rushing touchdowns. So we'll take this opportunity, switch over to the defense. Uh, ASU did a pretty good job. Darian Butler had a good game. Kyle Soley, Merlin Robertson, I'm sure all guys you're going to mention because they held the Buffaloes to three points in the first half and just 10 in the second half. Yeah, and I think I also really need to mention the younger guys, uh, the, the true freshmen, Eric Gentry, uh, 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 Garen Stansbury, uh, Joe Moore, Maybe not a true freshman, but another another underclassman that, that played really, really well. Uh, when we talked to defensive coordinator Antonio Pierce after the game, he said, look, uh, this this is a production-based business. I don't care if you're a freshman. I don't care if you just arrived here a, a, f a few months earlier. If, 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 if you are good, you, you, you will play. So uh, I think that uh, it's great to see so many young players really contributing along with the players you absolutely expected to step up, like, like, like Darren Butler and like uh, Merlin Robinson, for example. Uh, the ASU uh, the defense is a, is a really a unit that can that really can put the clamps on, on opponents. Again, as much as we as much as that loss to BYU was disappointing on 10,000 different levels, we both after the game said that in the second half, uh, the ASU defense played really really well uh, and really had had a touchdown scored on them. Uh, you know, pretty late in the game, but otherwise, I thought they really uh, upped their effort in the second half. Um, ironically, uh, the, the second half really started on a sour note for ASU because in the first drive of the third quarter. Quarter, Colorado receives the kickoff and really just ran it down in ASU's throat. 
I don't know if that was a, a quote-unquote wake-up call for the ASU defense, who played, like you said, very, very well in the first half. But but, but after that, it really was, again, just a, a, a lights-out defense. Uh, the quarterback for Colorado, Lewis, only had 67 yards uh, passing. And sure, I mean, he's been really struggling all, all season long, so not, 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 really, not really a big surprise or anything like that. And Colorado did rush the ball over, over, over 180 yards. And, and Antonio Pierce said, look, we're playing UCLA next week. We're playing Stanford the week after. So that the run defense is something we definitely, definitely have to do, do have to shore up. But ultimately, when you do have a team that's not passing the ball uh, that well, usually they might run the ball just a, just a little better. But uh, but but overall, I think uh, the, the, this defense really really played uh, well in long stretches. Uh, eight tackles for loss, uh, th three sacks. Again, I mean, I mean, this might be the weakest Pac-12 team that they're going to face uh, all, all season long. Maybe maybe, maybe Arizona uh, may or may not prove that to be uh, wrong. But uh, but overall, I think uh, the defense really, for almost the entire young 2021 season, is really really playing on a high level. Sure, there are much stiffer tests ahead. Uh, but, the, but right now, they, they really really did, really got the job done. Again, just had that little blemish in the first drive by Colorado in, in the second half. But otherwise, uh, no complaints at all about this defense. And again, really great to see uh, the veteran players you, you expect to you expect to play well, along with so many young players, especially especially in the front seven. That, that they really really did play uh, play well too. Uh, they didn't really uh, miss uh, Chase Lucas all that much. Demarcus Davis at corner uh, actually played in his first game uh, this year just because he was out for injury. So it's uh, good to see some uh, some some good depth. Even whether it's proven players or young players are really, really working well for the for this Arizona State defense. Overall, I think uh, that if you're looking at them compared to the offense, may, maybe just a little more uh, content with what they saw from the Sun Devil defense uh, uh, right now. But again, really playing, I think, almost for the entire season at, at a high level. And that's what we expected from them going into the 2021 season. Oh, usually in these post-game recaps, I'm the one who's pulling for positives, trying to find something good about this game. But it seems like there's no shortage of that. Let's go to the other side, negatives. Is there anything that, that really is pressing and must be changed before Pasadena next weekend? Well, I would say the penalties, look, the bar was so low uh, last week. I think it was impossible for ASU not to somewhat clear it. Seven penalties for 90 yards. Maybe had a different feel because a lot of them were on kickoff and 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 and, 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 and punt returns. Uh, yes, you had a you had a targeting penalty by by BJ Green. Honestly, I thought it was a really really uh, uh, quite a questionable one. And Antonio Pierce said, "Look, ultimately, you really need to make sure that that, that you are tackling low, nowhere no, no, nowhere close to the helmet." But but I think uh, again that was really a really questionable call. But I don't think it was really um, operational-wise a, a sloppy game compared to last week. Again, I understand the bar is really, really low compared to what we saw uh, last last week this time at Provo, I should say. But uh, but, but 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 really overall, I think uh, the penalties somewhat uh, somewhat cleaned up. I, I mentioned the run defense again. Colorado is definitely known to be a very very good ground attack team, but. U UCLA next week, Stanford in, in, in two weeks after that, and even I guess we would even go to Utah uh, th uh, th 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 three weeks from now. I think uh, those are definitely going to be much stiffer tests for the, for the ASU run defense, so I think that is definitely an area that, that, that really needs to shore up. I mean, as, as far as the offense, again, I think the passing game is going the right direction, but there's still some really, really big plays that, 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 that are being left out. I think less to clean tonight than there was than, than there were a week ago, two weeks ago, th three weeks ago. But uh, you'd like to see just uh, maybe a, m a more consistent e e e e effort by ASU. So overall, I mean, there the, the, the definitely are uh, some uh, some stuff they can clean up. But ultimately, ASU is three and one, one one and zero in Pac-12 play. The first time under Herm Edwards that ASU actually starts uh, conference play with with the, with the one and zero mark. And as we always say, Zach. It is so much easier to clean up mistakes after after a win, and and, and, and ASU, uh, you know, feel, feels fortunate they can win. I mean, you look at a team like USC already with two Pac-12 losses in the month of in the month of September, something that you really haven't seen. Um, Granted, Utah and UCLA tonight played tougher opponents than ASU, but they were really laboring, especially in the fourth quarter, to, to, to come up with wins. So I think ASU should feel pretty good about themselves. But, again, if they do uh, really address and address successfully all the items I mentioned uh, just, a, just a couple of minutes ago, I, I, th I think they'll be fine. And, really, the race to the Pac-12 South is uh, something that ASU is definitely right now a, 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 a part of. What I saw tonight really didn't change my opinion on that. No shortage of reasons for Sun Devil fans to go to sleep happy tonight. We will take some more time to get ready and take care of all of your rest of your postgame coverage for this 35-13 to 13 win for the Sun Devils opening up their Pac-12 slate with a win. 
our entire DevilsDigest.com crew will be in Pasadena next weekend at this UCLA game. But in the meantime, for our publisher, Hode Rubino, I'm Zach Keenan saying good night from Sun Devil Stadium.